Well, a couple of things that I think could be prophetic have taken place over the last 24 hours. As many of you know, there's been a changing of the guard in Saudi Arabia with uh, Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman um, taking over the, uh, uh, the reins. He has suddenly uh, created a uh, vacuum in the, the kingdom and had a purge to make way for his uh, absolute power to come into play. And so far there have been 11 princes, 4 ministers, and 10 of uh, former ministers detained. Now I have to believe that's probably just the beginning as time goes on as he solidifies his power in Saudi Arabia. This is what Analyst had to say in the article. It says, Analyst said the purge aimed to go beyond corruption and aimed to remove potential opposition to Prince Mohammed's ambitious reform agenda, which is widely popular with Saudi Arabia's burgeoning youth population, but faces resistance from some of the old guard more comfortable with the kingdom's traditions of incremental change and rule by consensus. The most recent uh, crackdown breaks with the tradition of consensus within the ruined family, wrote James Dorsey, a fellow, uh, a senior fellow at Singapore's S. Rajaratnam, I guess that's how you pronounce it, School of International Studies. Now someone asked me what I thought about this and how it would play out in Bible prophecy. I don't, I'm not sure exactly at this time how it's going to play out in Bible prophecy. I am, however, beginning to believe that it's possible that uh, some of the more prominent Arab nations will have a seat in the ten nation kingdom uh, that the Antichrist may rise up. And of course, that's just speculation on my part. But really, it all depends on how this situation uh, goes. For many years, I believed that uh, the ten nation kingdom would probably be all of the uh, European Union, and that this ten kingdom nation. Uh, would probably materialize uh, with a core EU. Now, certainly that still could be the uh, case, but I, I think it's more and more looking at uh, being somewhat of a group of nations and that the uh, Antichrist would rise up out of the European Union and lead this ten-nation kingdom. You know, nowhere in the Bible does it say that they, that uh, the all of the ten nations would come out of the European Union. So we have to take that in consideration that the European leader may be the one who rules these ten nations. And they are the ones who give him his power. Now, as I've said many times, that will be the way things will be in the beginning. But once this world goes from natural to supernatural, and it will do that in a hurry, because it's going to go from being a human-led world to being a supernatural-led world. Meaning that Satan will quickly, when he comes, when he's confined to the earth with, along with his demons, who rebelled at the, at, will, that will rebel at the midway point of the tribulation period. Satan will come to the earth and one of his first duties will be to possess the Antichrist or the leader, the world leader who is ahead of this ten nation kingdom. And I have to assume if Satan's going to possess the leader of the ten nation kingdom, that his demons will go throughout the world and possess the leaders around the world who will ultimately uh, be responsible for making this mark system that the Antichrist will disclose at the midway point of the tribulation period and make it work. You know, that's one question I get every once in a while is how in the world is everyone going to be made to take the mark or adhere to the mark? Well, everyone will want to take the mark. You know, this mark system is not, was not, is not going to be created for those who are contemplating taking the mark because everyone who re rejects Jesus as a savior during the first uh, half of the tribulation period, they're going to accept the great delusion. And that great delusion is that the Antichrist is the Messiah. So I don't believe for a second then when he introduces his mark system that there will be people who will be contemplating uh, who rejected the, rejected the Lord, whether or not they should take the mark. No, they're going to take the mark. It, this, this you can't buy or sell. Or you can't live in the kingdom uh, under the kingdom rule without taking the mark will be specifically for those who have said, Lord, I will serve you. As the Bible says in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8, it says that everyone will take the mark except those who have, who have accepted the Lord as Savior. You know, that takes away from those who, you know, I've had people come to me and say, well, what about those who are, are government dissenters? Well, according to the Bible, there will be no government dissenters who will reject the government's mark system just because uh, 
They simply don't want to go along with the system. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says that everyone will. And you really have to understand what, you know, what the purpose of the tribulation period is. You know, that's why I simply don't understand these preppers at all. They simply don't know what the Bible uh, has to say about the end times. You're not going to hide out in some bunker uh, deep in the woods or whatever the case may just be just because you think or see this mark coming forth. If you reject the Lord as Savior, you're going to take the mark of the Antichrist. Because a part of this great delusion will be that you will think that is the normal and, frankly, competent thing to do. It's like taking a Social Security number today here in America. Everyone in America doesn't think twice about having a Social Security number. When the Antichrist comes on the scene and he introduces his mark system, those who have rejected the Lord as Savior aren't going to think twice about taking this mark. In fact, it'll probably be, it'll be thought more of as being just silly if you don't take it. In fact, they simply won't understand why those who have accepted the Lord as Savior did not take this mark. But getting back to it, once the Antichrist comes on the scene, or should I say, once Satan enters the Antichrist, he will then kill the two witnesses. In fact, no one else in the world will be able to do that except for the Antichrist. And you would think with all the military and the great armies that will be around during this time, that they would be able to subdue and to stop these two men from presenting the gospel. And you know, the crazy thing is, is that in, in, in the real world, why would they care if they're presenting the gospel? But that's the, that's the whole answer. That's why this is a different world. Uh, on, the, on the other side of the, of the rapture of the church and the start of the tribulation period, it's going to be a completely different world. It's going to be a world full of people who hate God. In fact, that's where when the, when the fifth seal judgment is broken, it speaks of the great martyrdom that will take place during the tribulation period. And frankly, I'm not so sure that Satan will be on the earth at this time. I think that this martyrdom will just take place because man hates God and the message that the witnesses and the 144,000 witnesses and the angels will present. You got to remember, all of these supernatural things will be taking place during the first half of the tribulation period. This is not going to be a normal time. And you can bet that it's going to be a time where you're either for the Lord or you're against him. And God will bring a number of different plagues that's actually listed in the Bible that indicates that these plagues are, were basically brought forth in order to put pressure upon those who had not yet making, uh, made a commitment to serve the Lord yet. Um, so God will bring about horrible wars and plagues that will convince them that they need to serve the Lord. And, you know, one of those uh, plagues, or should I say, uh, or horrible di uh, demonic events, uh, we can call it demonic event, but it says right here that the Lord, he actually was in control of them. And, and really, he's the one that released these demons upon the earth. And let's go to the uh, Revelation chapter 9. It says, and the fifth angel sounded, and all of a sudden, an angel goes down to the bottomless pit and opens up this pit so that these great demons, and I'm sure everybody here has heard about these great demons and their, and their description. But basically their job was to go out and to sting those with a great sting. And the sting was so horrible that they, the people who got stung by them wished they were dead. And if you read the chapter, it goes on to describe them. But the most prominent thing about them, of course, is in their tails in which they will sting only those who have not yet received the seal of God. Now, that's not talking about the mark of the beast or a time during the mark of the beast. And I'll tell you the reason why in a second. But the Bible says that they will sting and torment uh, those on the earth for five months. You know, in, verse, in chapter 9, verse 4 of Revelation, it says, And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass on the, on the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God uh, in their foreheads. So, you know, we've heard of the mark of the beast who's going to have a seal placed upon uh, either a man's hand or their forehead. God also has a, a seal that he'll place on those who accept him as Lord and Savior during the first half of the tribulation period. And these evil beasts that will go flying around and stinging people, will not sting anyone who has that seal. And frankly, I believe the reason why they're stinging men is to convince them that they need to come to the Lord as Savior and to take the seal of God. And here's the next seal. It says, And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard the voice from the uh, four 
uh, horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet, loose the four angels, which are bound in the Euphrates River. Again, the Lord is in charge of these four angels. Now, you can call them demons or whatever the, whatever you want to call them, but he's in charge of them. And they're placed there for a very distinct reason, purpose, and time. And in verse 15, it says, And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour and a day and a month and a year, for to slay one-third part of men. Now it's getting really serious. And it says in verse 18, of course, it says that these will kill one-third of, of, of mankind. And it says, For the, their powers in their mouth and in their tails, and their tails were like unto serpents and had heads. Uh, and with them, they do hurt. You know, frankly, I believe they're exact. They're going to look exactly the way it's described. And I believe that they will not be able to be killed and that they will be a demonic type of beast where fire will actually pr proceed from their mouth. This is going to be a very, very scary time. And go down to verse 20, it says, And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues were yet repented not of their works, uh, the works of their hands, that they should not worship. Now, this is the reason why I know this isn't. This is going to take place during the second half of the tribulation period, or after the Antichrist has uh, introduced his mark system, because it says that they should not worship devils and idols of gold. See, there, there's going to be there's only going to be two religions. Once the Antichrist opens up his mark system to the world, there's only going to be two religions. All other religions will cease. You will either worship the Lord Jesus Christ, or you're going to worship the Antichrist which is made abundantly clear in Revelation chapter 13, verse 8. There will be no other religion, idols, or whatever the case may be, because it will be abundantly clear that God is real. It will be abundantly clear that the Antichrist claims to be the Messiah. And in the face of knowing the truth, those who reject Jesus as Savior will believe the delusion that the Antichrist brings and believe that he is the Messiah. Well, at this time of the introduction of these uh, demonic beasts, that time has not come yet because they're still worshiping devils and idols of gold and silver and brass and stone and of wood. And going on, it says, nor can they hear, see, nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornications, nor of their thefts. So these men, even though going through, and women, I should say also, even though, even though going through this horrible time of death, destruction, being stung by these demonic flying beings, they're still going to refuse to accept the Lord as Savior. And when the Antichrist comes along, they will uh, believe the, the uh, strong delusion and will accept the Antichrist. But that's what I mean when I say it's going to go from a natural to a supernatural uh, situation. But I believe at the very beginning of the tribulation period, it will be somewhat still in the hands of a human leadership, and what I mean by that is that this uh, war that will take place in the first four seals of when the, when the uh, seal judgments are open will be the start, basically number one, will be the, the uh, introduction of the Antichrist who will make a um, pact with uh, many, in which I believe will be a part of the modern Arab kingdom and Israel and the Palestinians. And, you know, it's hard to say who else will be involved in that. But about the time that this peace process is formulated and it's gotten underway, I believe that, that but the Bible states that uh, war will break out. Now, we really don't know when that war is going to break out, but at some point in time, and I believe it's going to be the first half of the tribulation period, that will take place. And, you know, it's very possible that that could be when Satan enters into the Antichrist and then he de determines that he is God and the world may, may very well go, over, go to war over it. I don't know if that's going to happen, but that is something that we can also consider. But this is going to be a very supernatural time that, like I said, will go from natural to supernatural in, in, in quite a short amount of time. So this is simply not about government versus the people. It's going to be about whether you're going to get saved or whether you're not going to get saved. And if you decide you, you're not going to get saved, then you're going to follow the Antichrist. And you will think it is the, 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 the right thing to do because that's what the strong delusion will make you think. Now going on to the next thing that I believe is going to be a big factor, and it's really, it's this is nothing new except for the fact that it's now reached the shores of the Mediterranean. And if you haven't heard, the prime minister of Lebanon uh, has stepped down because he fears for his life. And as more information has come out, uh, now various countries 
are telling their citizens to get out of Lebanon or to not travel to Lebanon because of the fact that there are multiple signs that Iran is now meddling in the Lebanese government. Of course, we've always known that Hezbollah has had a big foothold in the Lebanese government. But now that Iran has uh, made their presence known in Syria, they are now making their presence known also in Lebanon. So something that we have feared has happened, and that is that now Iran has um, a major foothold, not only in Iraq, which basically happened a long time ago when the United States jumped out, and now they've uh, got a big foothold in Syria, and now have stretched all the way to Lebanon. And frankly put, it's not even a secret anymore. And the prime minister of Lebanon, he's basically left the country altogether. He's probably seeking asylum somewhere. I mean, we don't know at this point where it is. But now you can be assured that Iran has a major foothold in uh, and on Israel's northern border, not only in Syria, but also in Lebanon. And, you know, a couple of years ago, I did an article uh, indicating that uh, Iraq, or I'm sorry, Iran is going to have, and their goal was to have 200,000 foot, so, foot soldiers. At least I think that's what the number was. I haven't got the article before me. But it was that uh, Iran's goal was to have 200,000 foot soldiers on Israel's northern border. And I used to, I, I got, I, I went to that uh, video that I did, and there were people that just laughed about that and said, there's no way that's ever going to happen. And now here we are two years later looking at not only Iran uh, on Israel's northern border in Syria, but also in Lebanon. And I can guarantee you right now that 200,000 soldiers is not a stretch and especially once this uh syrian civil war is over there are going to be a tremendous amount of foot soldiers who are in uh syria right now who will be at uh, the disposal of iran and that my friend may not be that many months away you know the question is is how much of this uh game plan is russia going to play a part of you know i fully believe that russia will be the force that will lead Iran into this war, the future war known as the Gog and Magog War. Both the bulk of the 200,000 or however many men there will be, the Bible says in Ezekiel 38, 9, I believe it is, that uh, it's described that who, who, wherever the army comes from, that they will be as a great storm. In other words, this is going to be a massive, massive army. And you got to remember that th this war has been going on for years and these men who are already in Syria, who are, have been fighting with Russia and Iran and Iraq and, uh, and Syria as well, are all battle-ready, hardened men. So it's going to be nothing for them to transition from one war to the next. In fact, it will probably be seen as the perfect opportunity for them to go from the Syrian war to an Israeli war. And frankly, we all know that Iran wants this war to happen. But it's going to take an evil thought from, I believe, the Russian prime minister to make it happen. You know, it almost sounds like in the book of Ezekiel uh, that the leader of this war will just all of a sudden have a thought come to him. And the thought will be so persuasive that it will be like hooks put placed in his mouth that he simply can't refuse. And, but the Bible says that the reason why the Lord has put this thought in his mouth, because it will be a time in which he can be glorified by the nations. In other words, the Lord is going to show his power to the nations at this point in time. But it looks like that this war just simply seems to be putting more and more uh, pieces into the puzzle together. And that Iran seems to be falling right into place. But this is what I have you know, for you today on this. I, like I said, I'll keep you up to date as much as I can and uh, let you know exactly how this plays into what the Bible says. And if you don't know the Lord, today is the day of salvation. Don't put it off. 150,000 people will die today. The Bible says that the vast majority will end up in a burning hell. Don't let that happen to you. Come to the Lord today, ask Him to save you. Repent of your sins, and from this day forward, live for Him. And you uh, that are Christians, you need to get a copy of my Tribulation Period Survival Guide. There are two versions. There is a digital version, which is written in nine different language, languages, and it covers 4.5 billion people. It's free. Get your download today. Pass it around. Or if you're like me, I would rather have a paperback version that I can actually hand my lost friends and loved ones. You know, I've used them like tracks for years, and people have actually gotten saved 
on the introduction of this book to them. So who knows, you could buy this book for your lost friend and loved one, and they could get saved before the rapture takes place, before the tribulation period takes place. So I would encourage you to make this investment so that your friends and loved ones could come to know the Lord. Just go down to the description section. There is a link, and it will take you to get either a copy of the book. Well, this is Terry Malone with the Calvary Prophecy Report.